In this video, I want to demonstrate a trading strategy which uses an old daily bar pattern which was discovered and published decades ago by Larry Williams. He used it to trade futures. However, I've taken the same pattern and applied it to the Forex markets. I'm going to apply it to Euro Pound Forex pair and then I'm going to introduce some different exits and show you how it works really well and actually has a win rate of over 85%. I've tested it on hundreds of trades and I've used data right back to 2008. So we've got over 13 years of data to see how this strategy plays out. Firstly, I want to show you that daily bar pattern and the rules to get in the trade. So we go over to the whiteboard and then we move over to the computer and I'll talk about and show you the different exits and then show you which one I think works the best. We're going to look at taking trades both long and short and we're going to look at those individually and then we're going to combine them to see how it works combined. However, the first thing we need to do is to identify an outside bar on a daily chart. Now, I've drawn an outside bar and for those of you who don't know, an outside bar, sometimes called an engulfing bar, is when the range of the bar, so the high and the low, are outside of the previous bar. So the high is higher than the previous high and the low is lower than the previous low. So the range of the bar is outside or it engulfs that previous bar. That's the first thing we need to look at. Then we need to look at the closing price of that outside bar. Now, when we get a close, let's say that we've got a close here. And I'm going to mark that in blue because that represents a buying opportunity. If the close closes less than the low of that previous bar, then that's our signal to buy. Okay. If the close closed above, so we've got a close above the high of that previous bar, then that is a short sell signal. If the close closed here or here or here within the range of this bar, so it wasn't above the high or wasn't below the low, we don't take a trade at all. We're only looking for a close either above the high or below the low. And so that's how we get in the trades. Once we see a close above the high, for example, then all we do, next bar at the open, we short sell, or if it was a low, we buy at the open of the next bar. The open and the close I'm using is 1700 Eastern Standard Time. That's normally the kind of standard for the Forex markets. And the exits are pretty simple. We are going to use a stop loss at some point. Uh, so it's going to be a fixed pip stop loss. We're going to test that. It might be 200 pips, it might be 250 pips. We'll test that. We'll find out which one works the best. The other exits we're going to use will be a stop and reverse type exit. So let's say we've had an entry to go short. So we're short the market and then maybe eight days later we get a signal to go long but we're still in the short trade. What we do is we exit the short trade and then enter long. So we'll swap and reverse the direction of the trade. And the same if we're long, we will reverse and go short. And the last exit that we're going to use is one that proves very, very profitable, uh, very good, very reliable, is the first profitable close exit. So what that means is we look, once we've entered the trade, we look at the end of each daily bar, and if we're in profit, then we exit the trade. We just get out and then wait for a signal to get in for the next one. However, I am going to swap it up a little bit, and I'm going to introduce what I call a day delay. So what that is, is it might be a day delay of three days. So it says you have to be in the trade for a minimum of three days. And then only after that three days, you look at the end of the day to see, are we in profit? If we're in profit, we get out. If we're not, we stay in the trade. But we have to stay in the trade for those three days. Unless, of course, we've hit the stop loss or we've got a signal, which is a reverse signal. And that day delay does tend to give us more profit and I don't know what the day delay is going to be. Could be two days, could be five days. We're going to test that too. And while I think about it, I actually done a previous video using a very similar strategy on Euro dollar. And it was quite a popular video on the channel. I'll leave the link to that because I think you'll like that. That actually had an even higher win rate of almost 92%. And although these are simple rules, let me know if you would like to see these rules written out. What I could do is create a quick PDF report showing you all the rules and some of the results so you can 
access that, download that, and have a written document. So leave a comment, let me know if enough people have said yes they want it, I'll leave it. So check the description of this video, then it's likely that there is a free PDF link outlining all the rules and the testing that we're going to look at today. So let's go to the computer now, and we see how the strategy works and what works best. The results of the strategies that I'm going to show you, and then when we look at vet testing various exits and stop losses, we're going to be using data from 2008 through to the end of 2018. And then what that does is that gives us uh, two and a half years of data that is what we call out of sample, so we're not using it with the development of the strategy. And what I can do then is I can run the test on the extra two and a half years. That will be from January 2019 through to, I've got until the end of June 2021. So we can test it on that unseen data. And if the strategy continues to perform, then that will give us some sort of an idea of whether or not it's likely to continue to perform into the future, into true unseen data and continue to make money. So let's have a look at the first workspace. In this first workspace we're trading long and short and if we look at a couple of these trades we've got a short trade here. If you notice the bar before it is an outside bar with a close which is above the high of the previous bar so then we've gone short on the open of this next bar and then you can see we're in the trade for one, two, three, four, five, six bars until on that sixth bar we closed in profit and then we've exited. So at the moment the only exits we've got is the first profitable close. You can see we've got a long trade here at buy. We've got the outside bar with the close which is below the low of the previous bar and then immediately on the day that we entered, 24 hours later, we are in profit so we've exited. There's no day delay, we've just exited. So let's have a look at the results trading long and short. There's the equity curve and it's okay, there's a big drawdown period here. Let's look at the curves individually. You'll notice that the long curve is quite a lot nicer than the short curve, that's the short curve. Interestingly, Larry actually uses this strategy just for long only when he published it you know, a couple of decades ago. Let's look at the total trade analysis. Taking both the long and short trades, notice that it's just over 85% profitable. That's, that's the win rate. And overall, the shorts aren't, aren't making any profit. Long trades, we've got an average trade of £188. That's 18.8 pips, which is quite good. And in total, we've got 139 trades over that in-sample test period. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at treating long trades and short trades individually. So in this workspace, in this test, we're just trading long only. Let's look at the performance report. You'll notice the same as what we've already seen. We've got the £188 average trade an equity curve like we saw before for the long only equity curve and the only exits we've got currently are the first profitable close or now this is where this strategy differs ever so slightly to the one I've done in the previous video what I've done is rather than when we get an entry signal to go short so let's imagine that we are long in a trade and we get an outside bar with a close which is above the high of the previous bar. That's our entry signal to go short. I'm actually using that entry signal. Rather than going short, it's going to be an exit signal from the long trade. So we're either exiting when we get that signal to go short, or we're getting out on the first profitable close, and that's the equity curve. But I want to introduce a stop loss now. So let's have a look, and I've already done an optimization which shows stop losses from zero, which you've already seen with the average trade of £188, right the way through to down the bottom, down the very bottom, we've got 400 pips. Now, looking down both the, the net profit column and the average trade column, 10 pips, 20 pips, 30 pips, these are all not profitable. This strategy needs quite a lot of room to work. So looking down until we start to get some reasonable numbers. I actually quite like around about here and I'm actually going to choose 300 pips. It's quite a nice stable area with the average trades all well above 100. We could go even more 
and when we go above 360, 370 pips, we do get a bit more of an average trade, a bit more net profit. However, the intraday drawdown has increased slightly from using like a 300 pip stop loss. So I'm going to use 300 pip stop loss. And that's what the equity curve looks like. It's not quite as nice early years and it's a little bit more choppy, but nonetheless, we do need to run a stop loss. So the next thing I want to do is look at that first profitable close or in specifically the, the day delay. So remember what I said was at the moment, the minute we've got profit at the closing price, then we get out of the trade. However, I'm going to introduce a day delay. So I'm going to say, you know, we must be in the trade for at least two days, then put the first profitable close rule into action. So I've done an optimization on the day delay. So let's have a look at that. And I've used a day delay from zero. That's what we're using currently, which is also the same as one bar in the, or one day in the trade, right the way through to 20 days in the trade. So we're not using the first profitable close until we've been in the trade for at least 20 bars. We can quickly see that as soon as we start introducing some sort of a delay, look at the net profit, 9,400 pounds. Even if we go to just three bar delay, we've almost doubled the profit. So this is quite a powerful modification. Looking down the net profit numbers, um, I like somewhere around here, this is quite a central amount of profit around 20,000, that's using six bar day delay. Or if we go even further, I actually ended up quite liking the 13 bar delay or 13 day delay. It's got a very good average trade as well of 399 pounds, much better than using no delay at all, at just 112 pounds. So let's have a look at what that's done to the performance report. And you can see the equity curve does look nicer now. We got much nicer performance early on, and it's overall quite a nice, smooth equity curve. We've already seen the numbers for the average trade, 399. It has brought the percent profitable down a little bit. That's because we're waiting for bigger profits, and we can see we've got bigger profits in our average trade value here. Our largest losing trade is just over 3,000, and that's had a tiny bit of slippage on our 300 pip stop loss. The next thing I want to do is do the same for short only. So although I'm gonna keep the 300 pip stop loss, so we're not gonna optimize the stop loss for the short only, we can assume that that's going to be reasonable for the shorts, and we are going to look at the day delay. First, let's look at the equity curve using no day delay, and it's actually negative, it's not great. So let's look at the optimization report using the day delay from 1 or 0 to 20. And looking down the net profit, we can see on 1 it's negative. It wasn't making any money. We saw that in the equity curve. Looking down the numbers, we can see that around about here, 15, 16, on the net profit, we've got 15,000. We've got the best average trade value, 296. So remember, I liked 13 uh, using just the long only. And we still have got reasonable numbers, certainly much, much better than using no day delay at all. So what I'm going to do, I could use a separate day delay for the short trades as the long trades, but I'm just going to use 13 and use it on both the short and the long to keep things a little more simple. So let's look at the performance report using that 13 as a day delay. And at least it's positive now. The equity curve isn't very good at all, but it is positive. So it's something we possibly could introduce alongside the long trades. It might give us a bit of a smoother overall curve trading both directions. Next, what I'm going to do is look at the performance for both long and short individually for each day of the week looking at the sort of trading day of the week idea. And I managed to improve the strategy that I did on Euro Dollar, which is the previous one in the previous video, by selecting the best trading days of the week. So I'm hoping that we can find some better trading days of the week 
or certainly eliminate some of the really bad trading days of the week for both long and short. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one. In this workspace then, we're going long only. We're using the 300 pip stop loss and the day delay using 13 days. And we're gonna to optimize to look at how the strategy performs for each day of the week. So I've got an input here called trade day and number one, Monday, two Tuesday through to Friday. So this is, number one would be only taking trades on the Monday and et cetera through each day of the week. And we can see by far that taking trades on the Thursday is much better. However, every one of these is positive, which is really nice to see. We don't often see that. We often see a negative day. So quite simply, I'm gonna just include every day of the week. If we had a very low average trade on one of these days, the lowest here is 163. Even after trading costs like commissions and slippage, we're still gonna be making profit with an average trade of 163. If we had an average trade, and it was only, let's say $40, then we might not be making money after costs. So I might consider eliminating that day. But with this strategy, because each day has a decent average trade, we're just gonna continue and trade every day long only. And next we do exactly the same for short only. And looking at trading short only, we can see that Trading Wednesdays is the best. Thursdays still works, Fridays works, but Monday, here we go. Here's one with a low average trade. We've only got $43. The time we've taken out trading costs for this trade probably wouldn't make any money. So I would probably eliminate Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday's negative anyway. So let's have a look, see what that looks like, just trading Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And that's the, what the equity curve looks like, which is better. And the total trade analysis, we've got less trades, obviously, and 30 trades. But we have got a high average trade of 461. So that's an option to trade just those later three days of the week for short only. We can see that the general pattern does work. But I think it works a lot better going long. Trading short does work, especially on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Personally, I think I prefer just trading long only. And we've seen for both long and short, increasing that day delay on the first profitable close does work too. 13 seems to be a good number. So the last thing we need to do is look at the out of sample data. We've got an extra two and a half years of data, which we didn't include when we were running the optimizations. So let's now look at data between 2008 and to, through to June 2021 to see if the performance is similar, see if we're making some new highs in the equity. In this last workspace, we can see, if we look at, hover over that last bar, it's the 31st of December, 2018. Now, we're gonna look at the out of sample data, and we've got data up until the 30th of June, 2021. We can see that on the chart. Before we look at the performance report, this is trading both long and short, you can see that, and it's using a 13 bar or 13 day delay. It's using a 300 pip stop loss. It's trading every day for long trades and only on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for short trades. So let's have a look at the performance report. And that's what the equity curve looks like, which is pretty nice. We are making some new highs in the equity. Let's have a look. The green dot shows us the new high in the equity. We go back. Um, before we had data up until about this point here, which is the end of 2018. So this bit onwards is making a new high. Let's look at the equity curves individually. That's the long only equity curve, and that's the short only equity curve. The short only looks like we're struggling to make new highs, but as I said, I don't particularly like the, the short trade version for this strategy. Let's have a look at the total trade analysis. We've still got a decent size average trade for both long and short, which is good. So I'm happy that the adjustments to the rules as in using that 13 bar delay and the 300 pip stop loss, etc., 
is continued to work in and out of sample data. So hopefully we haven't over-optimized things and the strategy will continue to make money into the future. I shall sit on it and watch it for another few months, see if it continues to make money and then introduce it to my live portfolio of other trading strategies. Now, there's one last thing that I want you to look at, one last workspace to look at. We've talked about entering the market as soon as the daily bar closes and the next one opens, which is at 1700. And I've done previous videos showing that around about 1700, the spreads on some of these Forex pairs can get quite wide. So we're going to be exposed to paying a lot more within the spread and thus losing some of our profit. So what I've done in the next workspace is I've tr I'm going to be using a, a chart on a 30 minute chart and that's purely for programming purposes and that allows me to enter and exit the trades at 18.30 hours, so 90 minutes after the daily bar closes. So the daily bar closes and we get our signal to either go long, short or exit for profit and we don't take the market order immediately. We wait 90 minutes, an hour and a half, till 18.30 when the spreads narrow and they come back down to some sort of a normal level. We're not paying an inflated wide spread around 1700. So let's look at that now. And this is the chart you can see we're using now a 30 minute chart and we're entering, if I zoom in, you can see that we're entering and exiting on this 18.30 bar. So that means that bar actually ends at 18.30 and then we're getting in on in or out on the open of the next bar, which is seconds later at 18.30. So let's look at the performance report. Again, this is showing exactly the same as what we saw in the previous workspace, including the out of sample data going both long and short. We can see that we've got a much lower average trade now because that extra 90 minutes has taken a bit of an edge away. However, because we're paying much less spread than if we were getting in and out at 1700, then we're probably still making more money. So I'm happy to stay with that. Looking at the equity curve, the equity curve is extremely similar. So getting in and out 90 minutes later hasn't really affected the equity curve, which again is a good thing. It really makes me smile how these old daily patterns that Larry discovered decades ago are still working, even on different markets like we've just seen here. And it doesn't get much more simple than that outside daily bar setup. The previous video I did on Euro dollar and this one now on Euro pound were pretty much the first two markets that I've tested this out on thoroughly and they both work. So I'm quite keen to make some more tests on some different Forex pairs too. Actually, some of you might remember that I did another study on dollar Swiss franc and I did that because dollar Swiss franc and the euro dollar are inversely correlated. So what I did is I took the signals from euro dollar and executed the opposite signal on dollar Swiss franc and that worked pretty well too. If I remember, I'll link that video for you to take a look at as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think the strategy could be a lot of use to some of you, especially if you're placing trades manually and you're not using automated software like I do. These outside bars with a close higher than the previous high, for example, they're really easy to see on the chart and then you just need to get in at a specific time. Like I said, 18.30 does work the best. Let me know what you think of this strategy. Leave a comment below. But until the next one, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.